Hey bakers, it's question and answer time. I've been getting a ton of questions in the comments and on the community page I asked for some more questions. So I've got a whole stack here that I had someone write out for me. I haven't seen your questions yet, so they will be coming as a surprise. Let's get started. Number one, I saw the first one because it was on top. I'm not going to lie to you. What's your absolute all-time favorite thing to bake? Well, it's a toss-up. German chocolate cake, oh my gosh, so delicious. That coconut pecan frosting is like, I mean, I get so sick every time I make it because I just gorge. Chocolate eclairs next on the list. Number two, how often do you actually eat your creations? Well, mm, every single time. <laughs> I would never like not eat something that I'm making because you have to taste test and like, what if it wasn't great this time? What if you want to make the recipe better? Any plans to do a cookbook in the future? Yes, I do. That's on my list of things for 2019 to work on. Um, so stay tuned. How many gingham shirts do you own? Well, how dare you? <laughs> I own a lot. There's a lot of shirts. I like gingham. I don't know what to tell you. I like plaid too, though. Do you have a dish you hate to make? Hmm. Not really. It's like, even if something's difficult, it's like a challenge. So you want to like, you know, master it. The perfect macaron. Have you ever created recipes with your, with sugar substitutes for diabetics? Mm, no. I, that is on my list of things to try out this year. I want to do some more gluten-free, some vegan, some egg substitutions, and some sugar substitutions too. So just have to make some time for it. What did you do before YouTube? Instagram. <laughs> I was an Instagrammer and a blogger, so I also was a math and science teacher. I'm not sure if you know. How long have you been baking, and have you gone to culinary school? Well, I'm a mom-taught baker. You've seen her on the channel, perhaps. She is amazing, taught me everything I know. YouTube taught me the rest. <laughs> uh, I never went to culinary school. I'm a self-taught baker. What prompted you to change teaching subjects from math to baking? Are you drawn to baking because of the math and measurements it takes to achieve baking success? Well, I love teaching math and science. I love baking. I love eating. <laughs> and it's very gratifying to use math in a practical application, like when I'm multiplying a recipe or doing stuff like that, calculating volume for pans, etc., etc. I wish I could yank my students back for a minute and say, hey, look, it's, it's useful. Um, you talk about adding cornstarch to cookies. Can you explain the reason why? And also, can you add it to any cookie recipe? If so, how much? Hmm. Well, cornstarch I love because it takes cookies and it freezes them in place. During baking, they're not going to spread out as much. So you can get like a beautiful laser line uh, for your cut cookies. And if you want to try adding it in, like take out maybe like three tablespoons of flour from your cookie recipe, substitute in the cornstarch and start there. Maybe add more or less depending on the recipe. It makes them very crisp, like shortbread cookies kind of, if that helps too. How do you store your cakes before parties? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so for this, I always, like if I go to home and family, if like a TV appearance or if I'm taking them to a birthday party, I will take an Amazon box and it's like really just rigged up crazily. I should show you, like, a, I should do like a video on how to transport your cakes because it doesn't look beautiful, but it always works. Do you think, except for that one time, <laughs> do you think your husband will ever show up in one of your videos? No, I've asked several times. Will we see a couple of tiered cakes or wedding cakes in the future? Well, I actually have one tiered cake I made and maybe, yeah, I could think about it. What part of Greece are you from? Any plans to make more Greek recipes? All-time favorite Greek sweet or dish. Okay, so I'm actually from Los Angeles, but my father was mostly Greek and his family was from Athens. I went to go visit my Greek relatives when I was growing up. Um, beautiful country, loved the cuisine. My mom, who's from Mexico, took up making all this Greek food to please the Greek grandparents, which fellow Greeks will know all about. <laughs> it's like, they're not playing around. Uh, so I love her spanakopita. My all-time favorite though is, I'm gonna mangle this pronunciation, so don't kill me. It's galactoburico, which is like spanakopita, but instead of the spinach filling, it has this in, 
insane. I'm like quivering thinking about it. <laughs> Semolina custard inside with like a citrusy glaze, I think. It's been a while since I had it. Uh, my mom says it's a lot of work whenever I ask her about it. Um, but she has made it for my brother when he visits. <laughs> How many KitchenAid stand mixers do you own? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> How do you make such smooth American buttercream? How do you avoid a grainy buttercream? Well, sift the sugar, that'll help, and add a little bit of cream if it's not smooth. Whip right before use, because all the buttercreams I found lose consistency, so whip it right before using it. As a fellow lefty, oh, hello. <laughs> I was wondering if you had any left-handed kitchen tools. That would be so nice. Oh my gosh, the tyranny of right-handed scissors. No, I don't. I don't have anything left-handed, it's sad. How many times do you make a recipe before sharing with your fans or subscribers? It totally depends because sometimes it's like one and done. I'm like, ah, oh, perfect. So proud of yourself, like. <laughs> sometimes it's like, oh, fail, 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 fail. And it finally works out. The German chocolate cake recipe took a while. There was a lot of like sneak eating of like, you know, cakes that hadn't risen properly because of there were too much fluffed egg whites, etc. So it totally depends. Do you ever use recipes submitted by your fans? What's well, your biggest pet peeve in the kitchen? Well, I haven't done that yet. Although I have gotten some cool recipes. I just have like they're in the in that recipe archive. And my biggest pet peeve in the kitchen. Oh, I hate hate. Two things. <laughs> One, getting buttercream on my fingers. It really like just takes me over the edge. I hate it so much. I don't like it at all. And then the other thing, which is like my trigger <laughs> to use uh, language that is current, is burnt eggs. If you burn eggs, you're a monster. Don't bring them around me. It's like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, I see that you like tea and scones. I just made a scone video like today, right before I shot this. Have you ever had tea at the Ritz Carlton Hotel in London? Hmm, I have not. <laughs> I've had tea at several places in London and I miss visiting London. Uh, we have almost two year old twins now and traveling internationally with them is a spicy meatball. They go to the East Coast though. Uh, if you were put in charge of baking something for a team of astronauts, <laughs> leaving on a mission, what would you bake? Something delicious. <laughs> Something freeze dried? I don't know, they'd be like totally screwed if I was baking for them because I don't know anything about packaging food for space. How long are you supposed to soak baking strips? Oh, that's a good question. How long can you keep using them for? So, and also, do you speak Spanish? Uh, not, I understand a lot of Spanish. I used to be able to speak it more when I taught public school and I had to like use it, but it's very bad. I'm not going to subject you to it right now. For the baking strips, that's an excellent question because I soak mine, but then I squeeze them underwater to get all the air bubbles out because they're almost waterproof after a while. So just squeeze them until they're totally soaked and then take them out of the water, squeeze them again. That'll be great. And you can use them like for years. Would you do a video with your children? Uh, will we send them on a baking video? Well, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> if you follow Preppy Kitchen on Instagram at Preppy Kitchen, then you'll see occasional photos of them and they're in the, my stories too. But on YouTube, I don't know, I just, they haven't signed a release. I put that little pen in their hand and it's all scribbles. It won't stand up. Would you make an awesome moist chocolate amaretto cake with luscious amaretto chocolate frosting? Well, um, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on my list. My chocolate cake recipe, which you can click up here for, is really, really like moist and fluffy. It's pretty good. You can add amaretto to that if you wanted to, uh, but maybe I'll do it in the future. If you could bake one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, gosh. Like just eating a one dish? I can't do that. No, that'd be like the end of me. <laughs> I need variety. Any pets? I have three dogs. There's Bing, Ayla, and Butch. Do you have any favorite baking brands? Um, I have tons. Like, there's not really one brand that's like amazing and everything else isn't. They all have like nice things. Like, different tips are nice. <laughs> when are you doing a live stream? Well, this is during a nap that I'm filming this, so it's always a little touch and go, and I love editing when I have to like go and see what's happening. So, I'm thinking about it. Maybe when I'm not working out of the house. What's your biggest piece of advice for a beginner baker? Well, I would say to do something, just like 
practice with different flavors, find things that you love, and don't be scared. Like, don't feel intimidated. You can do anything you want, and it's just a little bit of practice and the right tools to make things just great. How long did it take for you to become a great baker as well as a cake decorator? Um, well, I've been baking since I was little with my mom, so like riding on her coattails, it was easier, I think. And then for cake decorating, I was an art major in college, so I got to use my art training in some ways, like for color, and the rest kind of came kind of naturally. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like the first buttercream roses I made, my husband came home and he was like, whoa, wait, wait, what is this? He's like, these are actually so nice. And he tried to make them because he was convinced it was, must be like super easy, which I think it is. And his looked nice, but they weren't the same. What's your favorite Mexican dish? Mm, gosh, I haven't had it for a while, but I love a nice pozole. Uh, have you sold any of your cakes? I haven't. I give them to friends. <laughs> I, selling this seems like a lot. Final card. Oh my gosh, I'm going to buy so quickly. Who is your biggest inspiration for baking? Mom, my mom, she's so sweet. <laughs> uh, what is the worst thing you ever made? Oh, how dare you. <laughs> so this is like a childhood memory where I tried cooking like red meat for the first time by myself. So like I used like my pocket money and bought like a really, really, really cheap cut of meat <laughs> from the supermarket and tried making it. And I didn't know like about like the temperatures or seasoning and it turned out gray. And my parents came home and saw this and they just both started like cracking up like it was the funniest thing in the world to them. Totally not supportive, scarred me for life. <laughs> Thanks so much for uh, watching and if you want to see my other Q&A videos here and here, you can check them out. They are fun because the first one has my husband in it, a voice, you can see him. And the second one has my mom, so important people in my life. If you like these videos, hit that like button and subscribe.